Keywords and search questions, metadata, semantic core, SEO. Those are ambiguous words that might scare you off. But don't worry and be ready to conquer your fear of these big words and comprehend how the main parameters affect the optimization and promotion of your videos on YouTube. We'll dive into what keywords and search questions are and why and where they are needed on YouTube. And I'll also tell you what the main tools that you can use to move forward on YouTube. This is Nether from Prodvigate and here on this channel we talk about how to make considerable progress on YouTube today. So what keywords and search questions are? Let's start with the fact that when we upload a video to YouTube, the web hosting service doesn't yet know what this video is. It definitely doesn't understand what to do with it. Imagine that someone silently gives you a rag and leaves you wondering whether wash the windows or keep it in your dirty laundry. The same principle applies to YouTube. You upload a video without doing anything else and let YouTube wonder what to do with it. But if you give your video a title, description, and tags, YouTube won't be wondering what to do with it anymore. And it's these three things that make up the metadata that YouTube, you know, uses to rank your video. Ranking is determining the position or location of your video in the search bar. The search engine algorithms look at their list of parameters and compare it with the information that the YouTuber left about their video and determine on what page this video will be. But you probably have already thought about what affects the position of your video in the search. And the correct selection of keywords and search questions affect the composition of your metadata, meaning the title, description, and tags of your video. The process of selecting keywords will be called SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. It's simple. You search for keywords and search queries and select a title for a video. And formulate a description and place tags, you know, taking into account all the research on the topic. Then you're engaged in SEO. There's a significant difference between the concepts of keywords and search questions. Keywords are words that are contained in the user's search questions, and these words must be written in the title, description, and tags of your video. Otherwise, the YouTube search engine will not be able to understand where and who it should send your videos to. As a general rule of thumb, these are quite generalized concepts. For example, if you posted a video about acquiring a foreign language, for example, then the keywords will be foreign, speak, and language, and so on. Normally, it's the keywords that marketers use to compose the semantic core of their advertising and their target heavily relies on it. The semantic core is a set of words and phrases that reflect the topic of your video. So when choosing what words to pick for you know, describing your video, it leads to collecting the semantic core of your video. Search questions are the words or phrases that people type into the search bar for questions they need some answers for. For example, how to repair your car with basic tools at home. Ideally, you need to take into account both keywords individually and their combination in sentences and phrases for search questions in the metadata all along the line. Remember that 80% of the traffic is lost because of the incorrect selection of the keywords. There's a possibility that your audience simply cannot find you and by using the right title, tags and keywords, you're going to spare no effort in getting your target audience. And now that we've understood why this is pivotal for growing your channel, let's move on to the next part where we talk about it in detail. So, where do you need keywords and search questions on YouTube? The title. The title is the first thing that the viewer comes across on YouTube. Whether they click on your video and find it in the search depends largely on what kind of words you choose in the title. In the title, you need to place the keywords, you know, on the topic of your video and your channel in the most correct and logical way so that they fall into the search questions of your viewers. It's also pivotal not to forget that the first 50 characters of the title are the most important ones because it's these two things that the user sees before clicking on your video. Let's take a look at an example. If you're making a video about renovating your house, the keywords we're going to have to use are renovate, room, and house. The search queries that people tend to have on this topic are as follows. How to renovate your house, how to renovate your house with your own hands, how to renovate your house without spending too much time. 
you can use clickbait and you know catchy titles and keep in mind that the main parameter of video optimization today is audience engagement and if your titles do not correspond to the content then people won't make it to the end of your videos meaning that the audience retention rate will go down and videos will appear less often in the suggested videos and you don't want that to happen. To make it easier for yourself, put yourself in the shoes of the viewer and ask yourself how you would formulate a request and use that to your benefit. The second point is the description. Keep in mind that the audience sees the first three lines of your description, which means that the emphasis has to be on these three lines. They should contain all the catchy words that might attract viewers. And when working on the description, you need to arrange your work with the selection of keywords and their use in the text. Keeping in mind that you don't need to cram too many words into the description. The order of your words should make sense because a chaotic set of words will not give you positive results. We have, you know, a couple of cool tools in the description and the first of them is timestamps. You can clearly provide timestamps in the description of your video to make it easier for your audience. It's convenient and it also helps your video to be optimized and ranked on the first search pages. Tool number two is when you use some of the keywords and search questions. Even using them in the comments below the video can affect your ranking. So an attached comment with another portion of the words and phrases you need is going to do the trick. And tool number three is hashtags. YouTube is now introducing new cool tools that will help you promote your videos using hashtags. So it's absolutely pivotal to place all the key hashtags at the end of the description. It'll be easier for people to find you and also easier for YouTube. The next metadata item that requires optimization is tags. You need to start writing tags from the very keywords in the title and then you can type more and more phrases or more lengthy words on the topic of the video. The next point is the video script. Yes, it's important to pay attention to what kind of words you say in the video, especially in the first minute. I'll also add the subtitles item here because they are the content of your video and what you show in the frame is also important because YouTube has systems that read images and in return, they also affect the algorithms. As you can see, optimization using keywords is required on YouTube and everywhere. We talked about how to choose the right title in a separate video, so be sure to watch it. The description of the channel as well as in the description of any video requires analytics on the keywords of your niche. If we're talking about cooking on the channel, for example, then these are the words needed. Cooking, dish, and recipe and so on. So these will be high frequency questions, but the topic can be narrowed down with more medium frequency questions as well. If you have, you know, a channel about cooking home cuisines, for example, then you can add the word home to the word dish. I call general words on the topic in marketing high frequency queries and narrowed medium frequency phrases. Your channel tags will also be based on high frequency and medium frequency user requests for the topic. So what kind of tools can you use to search for keywords? Well, I'll analyze the tools step by step with how to optimize your videos on YouTube in general. So the first step, people's questions on YouTube. The very first thing you should remember about keywords is that they are included in people's queries on YouTube. We talked about this at the beginning. So the first thing you should do is to study their requests on YouTube. This is an awesome and completely free tool that will show you what questions people come to YouTube with, what they care about, what they want to know about your topic. The second step is YouTube analytics. We will use what's given to us for free, right? which means that we'll get into the analytics and open the views tab there. The first and closest plugin to YouTube that everyone needs is vidIQ. Here is the advantage of analyzing search questions over the search bar of YouTube itself is that you can study the number and find out how many times people have made a particular requests and it makes more sense to build your content around all the most key phrases and words. And also Google Word Stat. It helps not only to select keywords, but also to analyze the demand for your niche. When we enter a query in Google Wordstat, it shows us the number of requests of this phrase per month. But in the sense that the phrase is monitored in all phrases that are similar to your query. 
Today, there is an abundance of different browser extensions and services on the internet that are focused on working with SEO. They are paid for sure. For example, KeywordTool.io. So the analysis of keywords and search questions with as much detail as possible through various services and extensions will help not only to make the right you know, title or description and tags, but even to completely and correctly formulate your speech in your video. And that's because it also affects the ranking and promotion. Don't forget to look at how your competitors manage their channels as a whole, whether it was a one-time hit or still a constant success and how they understand what they're doing. If you can look at the channels as a whole and you will also be able to get some patterns like in the titles, tags and description and how they approach their audience on the channel. And step number four, keep your promises. Make content that will give viewers what you promised in the title, description and introduction. In order to meet your subscribers' expectations, it's necessary to plan the topic of your videos and write out at least a plan about what you will talk about in the video. Only then you will be able to take into account all the keywords and phrases and you will be able to rank your videos and meet people's expectations. If you have a problem planning everything, then you can watch our video on how to make a content plan by clicking somewhere here. So that was it. Thank you so much for making it to the end. I hope this was useful for you. And if you like this video, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and click on the bell so you don't miss out on our future content. Thank you so much and see you next time.